Alright, so hey guys, and welcome back to another Python tutorial. So I've been delaying this tutorial for quite a long time now, but here we are. Finally, we're going to today learn how to um, use Python and web scrape using it. So, in this tutorial, what we're going to be doing is grabbing a website and then scraping all of the content on it. So, what does web scraping really mean? So, um, pretty simply explained, web scraping is when you grab the content of a website and then you filter out only the content that you need or you filter out all the content that you need. So for example, if I open up uh, weather.com here, um, let's say I wanted to make a weather app. I would need a web scraper for this so that I can grab information from a third party website. So what I would ask my web scraper to do is access this URL right here and then pass the whole page and then grab this element right here which gives me the temperature and then what I would do is use that value in my program to grab the real-time temperature each time my program is opened. Cool, so we're not going to be creating a weather app, we're probably going to be creating that down the line in a few tutorials, but today we're going to be going through how to web scrape using Python. So that's enough of an introduction. So now what we want to do is go ahead and install a few modules that we're going to be needing for this um, program to work properly. So first of all, type in pip install requests because we're going to be needing to make requests to a website so that we can grab the page. Mine already says satisfied because I've got it installed. And then to manage the pages and pretty much pass the information from them and grab information or filter information, we're going to be needing something called uh, beautiful soup and then type in four. So this module right here pretty much gives us a nice interface to deal with passing of information and filtering as well. So this might not make sense now, but stick on, uh, stick on with me so that we can understand what I mean further in the tutorial. So what I'm going to do is zoom in a bit and create a new file, save it as web scraping, uh, scraping.py, py because it's a Python file. Cool. So first of all, we want to import B from BS4, which is beautiful soup 4, we want to import beautiful soup because that's what we're going to be using to filter our information. And then we want to import requests. Cool. So request is going to allow us to grab the page. So first of all, let's create a variable right here and call that variable URL. So now we're going to be typing in the URL of the website we want to pass or pretty much want to scrape the information from. So I'm going to go ahead and grab my portfolio website, which is already I know, http forward slash findazusdino.com and then forward slash again. Now what we want to do next is create a new variable called page, which is pretty much going to store the contents of the page that is being grabbed using this get request up here. Page equals requests and then we use the get method to get the contents of this page and then we pass in the URL in here. Cool. So now if we print this out, obviously it's going to return a pretty big um, object to us. So we're not going to do that. So instead, what we're going to do is we're going to start a new variable called soup. Now, each time you want to use beautiful soup, this is basically how it is in the documentation. You want to create a new variable called soup, assign that to beautiful soup. Um, and then what you want to pass in is the page. But when you pass in the page, you need to access the content of the page. So do page.content and then you want to do um, a comma and then you want to make sure that you're typing in html.parser. So we need to provide a parser to pass this information. Now, since the content of pretty much all websites is HTML, we're going to be using an HTML parser. So that does that. Now, what we're going to be doing next is I'm going to print out the content of my website. So if you want to print it nicely in a formatted manner, there's something called a prettify um, method inside the soup object. So since soup holds all the content to our website, which is already passed using the HTML parser, we're going to use soup dot prettify to basically format all this information that it's being um, that's being processed and then print it out. So before I do so, I'm going to go ahead and actually open my website in a Chrome window so that I can show you what it looks like. So Chrome and then find jesusgadina.com. So this is what my website looks like at the current moment. So I can scroll through and this is all the content on it. So when I run my um, Python script now, it should pretty much return an HTML version of this whole website, hopefully. So when I run this now, um, give it a second. And as you see right here in my window, 
Uh, let's scroll all the way up. It's a lot of information right here, but if I show you, it shows me my entire um, website in an HTML format, and it's pretty much show showing me in a formatted manner because I've used the Prettify, um, can't really speak, Prettify uh, method on it. So as you see, the title is fine, jesusgadino.com. I've got my different fonts, imports. I've got all the information on it. I've got the drop-down comment that I created. And then if I keep scrolling, I've got the footer, I've got the copyright um, for 2020. If I scroll to the bottom, I can prove that because it's literally right here. So yeah, it does pass all the information. Now you might say, hey, that's a bit pointless. We might want to just grab specific information for my website, such as the weather. So that is completely possible, which is what we're going to be learning. So just remember that the soup object right here that we have holds the entire website um, passed as an HTML document using the HTML parser. So we're going to be using that um, object to manipulate it and filter it to grab the specific information that we want. So first off, what we're going to be learning is extracting, oops, extracting all info from a class. So I'm going to go ahead onto my um, website and then I'm going to inspect. So we're going to be needing to inspect the website that you want to pass because you need to know what the class names and everything are. If you want to um, pretty much just um, grab items specifically. So what is a class? Usually a class is used to define a group of items. So in a class, I could have stored the moon image the text right here and the button right here so a class could be used to store a set amount or a specific amount of items inside it it could be anything from images uh, text videos anything really any html type of element so class is used to just um, have a collection of element that's what you want to remember so right here if i click on this class right here or which is a div it says home container and it pretty much contains my entire home page so as you see it's highlighted the whole thing so what I'm going to do right now is as a class, I'm going to go ahead and find my hobbies and experience section, which is going to be, um, do, 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 let's see, where have I got it? So it should be in the about me if I'm not wrong. Okay, so I'm opening up the about me section. And as you can see, I have a lot of classes because I've grouped my elements into classes or divs. And then what I've got right here is a div. Let me scroll down. What I've got right here is a div. And if I click on that div, it shows me hobbies and experience section, which is this section right here. So when I highlight over it, it pretty much selects all of this because all of this is grouped and it's stored as a div element where the class is equal to hobbies and experience. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to use my soup object and filter the information to pretty much just show me this div, which has a class name of hobbies and experience. So you can do this with other classes as well, but I'm going to show you this one for as an example. So let's go to my code. Let's remember my class name, which is called a hobbies and experience. And let's remember that it's a div. Cool. So now what I'm going to do is go in and type in a new variable called results and then assign that to soup, which is the entire website dot find all. We're using find all when we want to find multiple things. If you want to find just a specific thing, we're just going to be using find. Now, as I know, in my div, I am going to have multiple things because it's a class type as well. So I'm going to type in div because I know that the type of element I'm looking for is a div. And then I need to type in class underscore because I know that I'm looking for a class. And the name of my class, I'm also sure that is hobbies and experience because that's the specific class that I'm tra targeting right here. Now, we can't just simply go ahead and just do print results because it's going to be um, stored as an array of items or like an object that's being returned. So we need to go for it using a loop or a for loop. So we do for result in results, we need to do print result. Now, when I run this, you'll be able to see that, let's go ahead and show you. You'll be able to see that I'm not um, seeing the entire website now. I'm only seeing my div class called hobbies and experience. So it's only showing me everything that's in hobbies and experience. So as you see right here, so it starts off from hobbies and experience and it ends at something that says Regal College International. Let me verify that by going back to my website. 
So as you see right here, it starts by saying hobbies and experience and it ends at regular college international. So it's pretty much working fine. Now you might argue saying, hey, I just want to grab the text from it. I don't want all this code that's in there. I just want the value. So for example, in this H2 element, I just want to grab the hobbies and experience. And in the list element, I just want to grab the text. So that is very possible by just using the dot text method. So what we want to do is print instead of just result, we want to print result dot text. So when we do dot text, it will grab the text from the element and not show you any of the HTML code. So if I maximize this, as you see right here, we have just a text version of the website, which is displaying perfectly fine. So it starts from hobbies and experience and adds ends at regular college international. Cool. So that's how you extract information from a class and then display only the text. Now, what we're going to be learning next is how we can extract specific information using an ID. So instead of targeting an entire um, class, we can just target an element using an ID. Now IDs, I'm going to comment this out. Now IDs in HTML are pretty much used just for when you want to uniquely name an element. So that's what we're going to be doing. So extracting info using an ID. So now what I'm going to do is go ahead and open up my site and I'm going to inspect again because I need to do that. And then I'm going to go find an ID that's called project. So as you see right here, okay, I'm going to scroll down a bit in my website right here. This is a div called projects. Now it also has a class, but it also has, it has a class, but it also has an ID. Now I'm going to use the ID to point to this um, div right here, and then we'll see what the results look like. So you can either point to a class or I mean, you can either point to a div using a class or an ID based on what's available on the website. So just now we've went through how to access a div using the class. Now we're going to go through how to access a div using the ID. So the ID is projects. The type of element is div. That's all we need to remember. And now I'm, what I'm going to do is type in results again, and then we're going to do soup dot. And this time I'm only going to uh, look for one element in there. So I'm going to type in find. So soup.find and then in there we want to pass in div because the element type is div where the actually we don't need to pass in anything in here when we're passing in an ID it automatically does that for us. So we just need to pass in the um, ID which is equal to projects. Cool. And then lastly what we want to do is we're just going to print out results dot text. We don't really need to be in the loop because we're only using find we're not using find all that's fine let's run this now to see if it worked so as you see right here what has happened so it says doo -doo 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 -doo, it says projects discover some of my projects what is this thing blah 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 and it shows literally everything that's on my page so as you see right here using an id may be a lot more convenient than using a class because you don't really need to loop over all the information and you can have all the information at your convenience so it's pretty much the same thing we did with a class but this time with an ID. So we have literally grabbed the entire um, div for my project section and we're showing the information right here and that to just the text. Cool, so that's how to get specific information using an ID. Now we're gonna comment this out as well so that we it doesn't interrupt with the other stuff we're about to do. And now what we're gonna be learning next is how to extract info using an element type and a string. Now, this doesn't apply very well to my website, but let's say you were um, job hunting and you wanted to create an app, your custom app that job hunts for you. So you want to look on the website and find out the different um, job postings, and but you only want results from job postings that suit your keywords. So you have a specific amount of keywords like, I don't know, software dev, um, junior software dev, or I don't know, web dev. So these are your keywords and you only want results that um, have these keywords in them. So that's what we're going to be learning um, to do now. We're going to be learning how to extract results based on keywords that are in the website. Cool. So extracting info using element type and string. So in this, when, you, when you're when you doing these type of things, you need to make sure that you know the type of element that you're going for. And this usually only works with um, text elements like headers or paragraphs or, or anything like that, just text elements. Cool. So what we want to do is type in results again, 
and then we're going to assign that to soup.find and then what we're going to be doing is actually we're going to use find all because we're going to be finding multiple things in here and what i'm going to be doing is i'm going to be targeting my h1 element right here and then next i'm going to use a comma and then i'm going to specify my string now we can't just specify the strings in here like i don't know web dev um, software dev we can't just do that because basically what it's going to do is when it's matching it with the website it's not going to consider all the white space or anything it's going to look word for word so instead of passing just a normal string we're going to have to pass a function through it so we're going to pass a lambda a function through it using a lambda so lambda and then we type in text which is going to be equal to so text is pretty much just a variable we're using so who am so this is the keywords i'm going to be using who am now what should be returned is this right here so the bit that says who am i because this um, bit right here includes who am so it should return this element right here cool so what i'm going to be doing is i'm going to be giving it the text of who am and then what's next is that okay i'm just going to put this one back what's next is that we need to assign a function to it as well so we're going to do um for this who am text in the text that is returned by the website dot lower so that it's lowercase so if these two keywords are in the text that's returned um, in this find all right here then what we want to do is um, we're pretty much going to be running the loop so let's do our loop right here for result in results and then we're going to print result dot text now the result is only going to be the all the results in here are only going to be key are only going to be strings that include who am so that's you that's in my case only one string because it says who am i cool so it seems to be a problem here what's the problem invalid string do, 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 do. let's see string equals lambda and then I've, oh, I've spelled it wrong lambda cool spelled it lambda okay let's run this now and as you see okay let's go back to output output okay never mind run this again and as you see it says who am i so it's pretty much returning the element that it feels like it matches the next bit is going to be grabbing different attributes so grabbing attributes of elements using the element against the attributes cool so you might say what are attributes so let's say you have images on a website or hyperlinks on a website and you want to grab the hyperlink so usually in html a hyperlink is written in an anchor tag which is an a tag and then it has an href and then you have the link in there so something like http and blah 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 you get the idea so when we scrape to our website we want to access not the a but we want to access access the information that's stored inside the href so that we have the link so i'm going to show you how to do that now so first off what you want to do is as always we're going to do results equals soup.find all because we're going to be looking through the entire div right here now i'm going to go through my div and then my class is going to be project footer so project footer so let me show you on my website where that is so if i go to projects and project footer cool so it is literally right here so project footer is right here so it's this entire bit right here so there is a hyperlink in there behind the button called visit github and there's also an image in there which is right here so we're going to try and um, grab the attributes for my um, hyperlink first to find the link of that button so we have our class which is um, project footer now we do for result in results we want to create a new variable called hyperlink and then we're going to use the result and then use the find method on it and in the find method we're going to specify what element we're looking for um, let's look for the a tag first or the anchor tag to look for the hyperlink and then as i said the attribute we're looking for is the href uh, href and then what I'm going to do lastly is print um, f, so an f string, from the following links. 
and then we're gonna do, 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 do go back in here hyperlink and then a blank line let's run this up and hopefully it should just work fine okay let me close this off and let's try to run that up again they don't return anything for some reason so am i in the right thing so i've got div here then i've got class equal to um project okay i've got i've uh, misspelled this so it's project and not under underscore it's um project hyphen so let's do that and then run it now and then as you see it says found the following links in the section that i provided and it shows my github right here so johan Godino 14. so if i go back to my website let's verify that the link is correct and if I do inspect, as you see right here, we have an A tag with an um, href of github.com Johan Godina 14. So it's working completely fine. It's returned the link for this section. Now, what if we wanted to find all the image links for this section right here? All we need to do is go back to VS Code. Let's close this off. And then what we want to do is instead of the A tag, we know we're looking for an image tag this time. And then instead of the href, we want to look for the source tag because images use source, not the href. So let's run this up. And as you see right here, it says following links were found. And this is on my server. We have an images folder and then we have the github.png file. So as you see, it shows us the link. So that was it for today's tutorial, guys. Um, it ran a bit long because I wanted to try and explain how this whole thing works under the hood. Um, if you guys enjoyed, please make sure to drop a like, comment, subscribe and share because sharing really helps. If you'd like to donate to the channel directly, you can do so by either becoming a patron using the Patreon link in the description or by purchasing a super chat emoji or highlighted message when this video premieres. Once again, guys, I appreciate all the support that you guys have been showing me on the recent videos. I'm re really grateful for all of that. I really appreciate it. Um, if you'd like to, you can follow my socials or join the Discord channel for some fun and uh, share some ideas in there. And guys, I will see your beautiful faces with an interesting project in the next tutorial. Peace.